What's up, what's up, everyone? Welcome in episode 20. All right, we go behind the scenes with radio. We talk a little bit about why we play the songs we play, why we do what we do, and Guns N' Roses' Sweet Child of Mine with their billion streams helps us get there. Metallica's Black Album turns 30. We're going to talk about its impact, and then we're going to run down our top five favorite Metallica songs of all time. We'll finish up with a concert update. It's the good, bad, and the canceled. It's not always fun to talk about, but there's some good information and what we can expect moving forward. And then wrap up with our final thoughts. Let's go. It's time. Put on pay pass. Well, well, well. Look at this, Rod. We made it to episode 20. We're almost old enough to drink. Come on. <laughs> Can you believe this? Episode 20 of the Play Pants podcast brought to you by Lucky's Pub West in Houston and Pirates of the Quarter Tours in New Orleans. I got breaking news from three days ago. Dude, our favorite thing is canceled. Jazz Fest got canceled. You know about this, right? Oh. I mean, Foo Fighters, you were coming in. You got plane tickets. You got the whole nine yards. They canceled it due to the uh, resurgence of the COVID situation here in New Orleans. So I, I do want to get into it today because there's a lot of other concert news. And, you know, everyone's asking me about BuzzFest, which is still going on. It's Labor Day weekend. So that's all still happening. But there's a lot of shows that are dropping. But we didn't want and we both agreed on this. We both we didn't want to start the show with a bunch of bummer, bad news shit. Like, no. let's talk about some fun stuff. But we will get into it. I think it's interesting. And I think it's important to get into some of the changes that are going on with some of these shows moving forward. Um, you know, there are shows that are just dropping, um, but I sent something to you this week and it talked about Guns N' Roses and on Spotify, which, you know, my company, iHeartRadio, we don't want to talk about Spotify, your company, Odyssey. No, we don't want to talk about Spotify. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You, you, you want people getting their music from us and our companies and Guns N' Roses just eclipsed 1 billion downloads on Spotify. Guns N' Roses, specifically Sweet Child of Mine. Wow. So, um, and I heard, I, you know, I listen, I try to listen to a lot of different things. And Eddie Trunk, I think, does a great, great job out there. And he had mentioned it as well. And I kind of came to the same, I, I kind of came to this same thing. And, and this is where I, what I sent over to you. On Spotify, you can have any song you want, right? That's the beauty of downloading music. I mean, pretty Get much. Anything is you want. Yeah, there's playlists. You can do anything you want on Spotify, streaming, right. everything. Yep, you got it so, all. I, I'm guessing there's 100 Guns N' Roses songs out there. You know, I mean, they don't have a huge, massive catalog. I'm guessing there is maybe 80 Guns N' Roses, 85 Guns N' Roses songs out there. But Sweet Child of Mine is the only one that has a billion spins, billion downloads. Jason, you work in classic rock. I work at an alternative radio station. One of the most popular questions that we get all the time when you're out and about, doesn't matter with your family, with your kid, you're out just eating by yourself. You get a phone call, you get an email, you get blown up on Twitter. Why do you guys play the same songs over and over again? Because why do you play these songs? Why do you play, you know, everyone knows these songs, man. Why don't you go a little deeper on some of these albums? When I sent you the Spotify thing, a light bulb went off in my head. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. On Spotify, you can have any Guns N' Roses song you want, but the song that's downloaded the most is Sweet Child of Mine. Yeah. Why wouldn't a radio station play that one the most? <gasps> I think we're onto something here. This is Dude, pretty good. This is pretty good. I, I think we're onto something here. I've always tried to explain hmm. radio to people. Sometimes I'll do it individually. You've done it. You're sitting oh. at a bar, you're drinking a beer. This might be one of the greatest examples of why things are done the way they're done. Yeah, it's it's very simple actually. They played the <laughs> it song. Is, but it, it is simple, but it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not simple for people to understand that aren't sitting at your radio station or my radio station. Dude, I work at a classic rock station. I have talked before, sweet child of mine. 10,000 times in the last 10 yeah. years. I have talked after Sweet Child of Mine 10,000 yeah, times. But hey, bra, you know, why don't you play Rocket Queen? Hey, hey bra, wh wh why don't you play My Michelle? Why do you yeah. always play Sweet Child of Mine? 
dude, because out to get me ain't gonna people aren't gonna stick around. People aren't gonna stick around. We actually talked about this in a previous podcast a little bit. We kind of got into this a bit. It's all about the mighty dollar at the end of the day. It's all about ratings. You, Rod, I, Jason, have to get ratings on our respective radio programs. Ratings meaning getting people to listen and getting them to hang out. So ratings, people, we want as many people listening to us as possible. Please continue. You're doing a great job. Because if we don't, guess what you and I are doing? This every day. <laughs> this ain't paying <laughs> shit so yeah, far right? that I can tell. Uh, so we have to play the hits. It's been going on for decades. It started out back in the 70s, all freeform radio, bro. There's a reason that doesn't exist. Nobody was listening to it. The guys, I think the guy's name is Lee Abrams. He kind of started the whole top 40 radio thing back in the 70s. He sat in a diner, watched people play the same fucking songs out of a jukebox over, over and, and over, over and over when you again. you had a lot of selection to choose from and Albums. you were in control, just like Spotify, you, anyone that's listening or watching this podcast, you're in control. Mm -hmm. You can go in there and get any song you want, yet you're telling me the Guns N' Roses song that you want to hear the most when you have all of them at your disposal is Sweet Child of Mine. Is anyone still wondering why Jason's classic rock station plays Sweet Child of Mine the most out of Guns N' Roses? Is there one of you in the class today that has a, a follow-up question on why that song isn't played the most? It's a or why it shouldn't be. It, it, and I explained it last time, or a couple episodes ago as well, that if you go through your, say you have an iTunes playlist on your computer, on your phone, or wherever you got the damn thing, right? You can sort it by most plays most plays on your own personal iTunes library. It's going to come up with about 40 to 50 songs are going to be your most played on your own personal damn list. Doesn't matter what kind of music you like. And then it's all going to fall apart. Well, guess what? You might as well dump all those other songs in the trash because you're only listening to those top 40 or 50 songs. I'm telling you, it's how humans work. Once you like some shit, you're going to continue to like the shit. One billion streams on spotify it's a ridiculous number and there's a million billion other songs on spotify why don't you go dig around a little bit maybe find something else nope i want to hear sweet child of mine for the 10 billionth time i went over and i just i wanted to get get another example there's somebody out there going on you know fuck spotify i don't use it blah 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 okay, okay. so i'm programming a radio station and you got to pick a format you got you I'll give you my one analogy about a format that I think explains it about the best, but I went over to YouTube, kind of the same premise. Mm -hmm. Just about every band songs are on there, like all of their songs. So I wanted to, I wanted to do something relatable to my station. So I looked at the red hot chili peppers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Out of all the red hot chili peppers, like, cause like we don't play suck my kiss. Okay, I'm just giving you an example. We don't play Suck My Kiss. Great song. Um, there's, yeah, great stuff. You know what I mean? There's great songs on Mother's Milk. I love the Mother's Milk album, right? right. So I went over to YouTube, and Red Hot Chili Peppers, Californication, has 852,030,278 views when I got this number last night. Don't worry. 94.5 The Buzz plays plenty of Californication. Absolutely. I wonder why we play that Chili Pepper song. Because can't figure, can't figure it out. It looks to me like that's the most played song on YouTube for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And they still Red can't Hot buy shirts. <laughs> Red Hot Chili Peppers, other side. 572 million and change. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we play other side. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder really? why. You do? Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers, scar tissue. 364 million. Oh, yeah, we play that. Hmm. The biggest songs from the Red Hot Chili Peppers that are on YouTube are the songs that we play. Now, let me just be honest with you. It's same thing with Jason Station. Totally different company that he works for. Right. Odyssey. I work for iHeart. I'm telling you right now, our music research, we don't get it from <laughs> YouTube and Spotify. Now, no. I don't know if, if people glance at those things because you have to look at everything. 
But I can tell you that the music research that's done for the buzz is done here in Houston. Okay. It is done. Well, you didn't call me. I'm never going to make that guy happy. Okay. I've been right. hearing that for 30 years since I've been in radio. Well, nobody called me. Sorry, bro. They can't call every single person. You got to call a large amount of people. And then from that, you take that's called a sample of the population. When I saw it, it took me a minute. I'm like, okay, great. We, we did the story too, you know, talking about Guns N' Roses hitting a billion. And then, I don't know, for some reason, it started eating at me a little bit. <laughs> and because Spotify is always a cool kid that's got Spotify that – is radio even does, – does radio, do radios work? I don't know. I'm on Spotify all the time, okay? And you always think it's going to be that super hip kid that just doesn't know anything. No, people on Spotify know a few things. And they know what the best Guns N' Roses song is. Sweet child of mine, apparently. Apparently, it's true. But I went down the YouTube rabbit hole as well, Rod. Okay. And I, I dug up the top rock songs on YouTube. This, is, this data comes from about a month ago, so the numbers aren't going to be exact, but it's the same shit, okay? The top 10 rock songs on YouTube, and I'm talking, you know, views or whatever it is, the clicks. The, yeah, yeah. I, I, this, I can't wait. Dude, this is wild. And you're going to go, holy shit, this is your fucking Lincoln playlist. Park. Lincoln Park's got to be in there. Yeah. Absolutely, it is. Lincoln Park in twice the, in the end. Yep. And in the end and crawling will be both in the top 10. Mm, close. All right. Number 10, final countdown from Europe. <laughs> oh, you're going rock, rock, all rock. I'm just rock. No, I just, I just typed in rock. And, and there's okay. alternative bands in here. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. You know what? I guarantee that got a bump from that. Uh, was it uh, the Subway commercial? Remember, right. it was in the it was in the work uh, microwave in the break room. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I that promise helped. you, it got a bump. That was a Geico commercial. It had to be something. Yeah, ten eight hundred forty one million on YouTube. Uh, Thunderstruck from ACDC at number nine, eight hundred sixty okay. million. That makes sense. Nothing yep. else matters from Metallica. Nine hundred million. Nine hundred million. Uh, it's my life from Bon Jovi. Nine hundred forty million. They can't all be winners, Rod. Um, okay, now we're getting into the billions. This is billions of views on YouTube. Only in the rock world, um, in the end, from Linkin Park, 1.2 billion. Okay. Yeah, we covered that as a story, them getting that billion. Uh, Sweet Child of Mine, number five, just over 1.2 million as well. Smells Like Teen Spirit. Oh, a billion. Yeah, no shit. Billion, yeah. billion with a B. I can't even <laughs> fucking, like, that's such a ridiculous number. It's hard um, to comprehend. Teen Spirit, smells like Teen Spirit, 1.25 million, billion, shit, at uh, number four. <laughs> Fuck, I, this is why I do radio, not math, dude. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody from Queen, 1.25 billion. Lincoln Park's Numb, 1.5 oh, yeah. billion. 1.5 billion on YouTube at number two. And wait, this is going to fucking, you're going to go, oh, yeah, of course. But we're talking Guns N' Roses again. November Rain, one point, almost 1.6 billion on YouTube. November so, Rain at number ones. Here's a real question for you because that's a nine-minute song. Can you, you, do you guys play that song? All the time. November we Rain? The, we play the fuck out of November Rain. Nine minutes and like one second or some shit. So it's the full version? Because yes. Guns N' Roses were really weird about edits. Yes, it's the whole fucking thing. We play it all the time because it's got 1.58 <laughs> billion views on YouTube. And I'm quite sure it tests just fine here in New Orleans. But to, to this, and, and like you said, YouTube, there's nothing but options. There are a bazillion songs out there. Everything. From eras Everything's from out there. Elvis to right now, someone's just uploaded a new video. So you got plenty of choices, but there you go, man. There you go. This is why radio plays the same shit over and over again. We need ears on the radio. We need them to stay around. We need ratings. Ratings, salespeople can sell it to make money. These are big ass companies we work for that have people to answer to on the you know the stock market and shit. But the research <laughs> is done, and I and I I just want to make sure that I say this because you know I I don't I don't. Of course, I work in radio and, you know, I've got my problems with my company like all of you guys. OK, I don't care if you're a hammer swinger or whatever. Everyone's got problems with their company, but it's not. Everyone thinks everything's a cookie cutter and it's stamped and it's like, boom, here, here and here. What we play and the research that we get back, it doesn't look like the station in Los Angeles and it doesn't. The stuff doesn't come back the same in, in New York. It no. doesn't. So the radio station really is tuned 
to specific audiences. And I know Jason can speak for that in his, in his, uh, in his market. They don't just, everyone just assumes that it's just one stamp. And as soon as you guys started learning the name of radio companies, it was all over. Yeah. Well, clear yeah. channel comes in and does this. And I, I still get people complaining about clear channel to me, which we haven't been that in 10 years. Right. So it, the, the radio stations in California, they sound different. The offspring's going to test a lot higher, you know, than they're going to play more Blink-182 over there, and they might go a little deeper. They're not going to play Blue October. And, you know, in Jason's market, they're going to play Cowboy Mouth on the radio, and they're going to play Better Than Ezra. And in Buffalo, you're going to hear a shit ton of Goo Goo Dolls. It, you know, it, it, the markets are individualized, but you can't deny Sweet Child of Mine. You can't deny it. Why do you play this song? Because people obviously want to hear it. Go to a sporting event. You're going to hear Sweet Child of Mine. <laughs> You're going to hear Welcome to the Jungle. You're going to hear Enter Sandman. Every single football or baseball game you go to, there's a reason for it. It's popular as shit. So guess what? We're going to play these songs over and over again. When I was programming an, uh, like a kind of an alternative rock station in New Orleans a few years ago, I would get on just to go behind the curtain a little farther, Rod. You know, I'm the program director. I'm in charge of everything in the radio station, the music, everything, oh, the jocks, everything, right? Big, so big dick big, over here. Big time swinging it around like a little <laughs> worm on a hook. So I would go through all the, the record sales locally. I get, I get uh, uh, the, all the uh, sound scan was what it was called. So anything that's sold right. in the record stores locally, I would get that, those numbers. So I'd be like, okay, well, this album is selling or this song is selling digital downloads, all that shit. I would take that. And then you get the data from the national charts and you get the shit from the record labels. So I'd get nothing but stacks of data every week. So I'd look at it. I'd listen to the songs. I'm like, well, okay. And then I look regionally who's playing this and all this shit. And then once a week, I got on a phone call with the corporate guy, right? And he was like, and it was me and like 20 other alternative radio stations around the country. And then it's like, well, you know, he'd be like, well, this song is doing great. And I'm like, not New Orleans, bro. <laughs> you know, and we'd yeah. hash it out. You know, the guys in Iowa are like, well, we should play this. And I'm like, well, that's, that's, that's not going to work here in New Orleans. We should play this. And they're like, well, that will never work here for us. So even though you still have that corporate guy who was in charge of shit, at the end of the day, what he said was going to go, but you could always argue your, your point. Yeah. Um, you're fighting for your, you're fighting for your turf. You know, right. your turf was new Orleans. You were fighting for that. It's like, no, no, no. These, I know my people. And this Correct. is what I bring to the table. I've looked at all of the data. Here's what's happening here. And there's a real story on this boy, Correct. for some reason. And, and it, now that I can't figure out why some bands are popular in pockets for the longest time, and you could laugh your balls off at Creed, okay? Creed's a Florida band. Right. Their biggest market was Houston. Mm -hmm. Why? It made no sense for some reason. And Shinedown would tell you the same thing. Also, primarily a Florida band. Right. For some reason, Houston was their biggest market. You know, and when I was in New Orleans, we would get on a few songs, and for some reason, it just it clicked. It worked. And then they would use your market to call other radio stations around the country. Well, Rod in New Orleans, he's given that thing 40 spins a week and he's got huge research on it. You guys right. should play this. You know, then they start playing off of cities and, and everything else. But I could never explain the Creed thing. It, you know, they had a live video that came out. They used the Woodlands here. I mean, if you're going to put out a live uh, DVD, you're going to choose a place that's going to be really good for you. They chose Houston because it was their biggest market. Why? I, that I can't figure out. It's I, weird. There's no, there's really nothing that makes sense to me. Um, they didn't write a song about Houston. You know, they came through here a lot. Right. Um, they just resonated with the people here. 311 was a band in New Orleans. They would do 311 day like all the Huge. time back here. And 311, the sound doesn't make any sense. The they're from like Omaha or some shit. And but they always did great in New Orleans, man. And they would pack the places on their 311 days, and it was insane. They're like superheroes in New Orleans, at least for quite a few years. Um, you know, Ron, I I know we probably are going to get this question, and I get this question a lot. Like, you know, you look at a band like Guns N' Roses and a billion down a billion streams on Spotify. You're thinking, yeah. 
fuck, what are they doing touring? Just sit around and get your balls licked by dolphins. You can, you can buy, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to do anything ever again. A billion downloads. That's gotta be like trillions of dollars. Yeah. I did math and this is good math. You're gonna love this. You want to, okay. this is why artists are pissed off at all these streaming services. I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna break it down. See if you can keep up. Spotify pays on average 0.004 cents per stream. 0.004 right. cents. So that billion plays of Sweet Child of Mine equals about $4.4 million. Okay, 4.4 million. And it's taken how many years to accrue that? That's a cumulative number. Watch this. All right. Thank you. Um, it, that's a nice chunk of change, but not all that money goes to the artist. They often also have to divide that money. The record label or a manager gets a cut. I dug it up. Band managers can make around 20% of what a band makes. Okay. Sure. So there's, he's going to get $880,000 out of this 4.4 million. So now you're down to three and a half million dollars. All five members got credit for writing the song. So now you've got to divide that 3.5 by five. So now you're going down to a $700,000 per guy. Spotify, and here's to answer your question, has been around 13 years. So that breaks down to $54,000 per year per guy for 1 billion streams. And you're probably thinking, 54 grand a year? Fuck, not bad. Hey, guys, can, I, can, I, can I, one more thing? Yeah. You did not take out taxes. Oh, I mean, you're, okay. So you're making about thirty grand. You're ta <laughs> you're taxing you're taxing that at the the highest tax rate. So you're taxing right. that at what thirty eight, thirty nine percent. I don't know. I don't know those numbers. Right. But I can tell you, it is an upper thirties number that that's getting taxed at. And I didn't even mention the Riker labels cut or anything oh, else. Yeah, yeah, All yeah, the yeah, other yeah. cuts. So by the end of the day, one billion streams. You're thinking, fuck, where they're they're trillionaires. No, no, they're not. They're making about thirty grand a year off of one billion. Uh, that doesn't even cover like the fucking Jack Daniels and their writer. Well, this is why bands tour so much. That's where the right. money is now. Nobody's selling albums and streams. The artists are getting screwed. You always hear about artists getting pissed off. But that, to wrap it up, Rod, is why we play the shit out of the same songs over and over again, man. And we're yeah, going to keep doing it. But send us questions. And I don't mind, you know, that's what the beauty of the podcast. We get a little bit more time to talk about this. I, you know, I, I can't sit around in the morning and talk about this, you know, for now 20 minutes. But I, I, I tried to, and I scratched the surface just a little bit. The other question that I get, and we don't have to spend a lot of time on this, is the format of the radio station. Like, people won't understand. Because we're talking about Guns N' Roses. And... Mm -hmm. Guns N' Roses is now considered a classic rock band. Absolutely. So radio stations will carve out a format, okay? So this is how I explain it. When somebody comes to me and they're bitching that we're not playing Pantera on the air, okay? Still? Now, it's a rock, it's a, yeah, Pantera. So <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's a rock band. Yeah, but, you know, the, the bone, the bone in, you know, Beaumont, the bone, you know, the bone, Rod. I, I, I don't know. There's a bone somewhere. Right. Of course. And they're, there is. And, and they're a rock station. It's awesome. You know, San Antonio still has a rock station. Um, not a classic rock. They have a rock station there. Right. So radio stations do pick a lane. You know, you have your alternative and then there's sub segments of that. There's some that are really, really poppy alternatives we're a rock leaning alternative you guys are very lucky in houston we're a very rock leaning alternative and we still play a lot of the bands that brought us you know to the dance you know jason classic rock is kind of classic rock and i know there's there's sub sections of it as well but regardless think of it like a restaurant and this has always been the best analogy for me okay i always call my radio station a steak joint it's a steak place, man. My restaurant is a, and you have a menu. Jason has a menu at his steak place in right. New Orleans. You go to that steak place for steak. Now you don't like steak. So there's going to be a few other things on the menu. That's good. Okay. But would you ever walk into a steak restaurant, open the menu up and say, where's the fucking tacos, dude? Where's the pizza, Wait bro? A minute. Wait, hang on a second. What did you hear about us? Because we're a steak restaurant. You can't really be mad that we're not serving tacos. Tacos are great. 
I love tacos, but we've chosen to be a steak place. Jason, right. you're, you're a steak restaurant, okay? Well, why aren't you playing Fallout Boy? Because you know what the menu is. You've created a menu. You have a restaurant. Restaurants have formats. Radio right. stations have formats. And that, I think, I've actually explained that to a few people, and it's, it, they've at least nodded their head and it looked like I gave them good directions. And they said, okay, I think I'm going to be able to find that. Okay. It's just, you, you, you got to understand Pantera. And, and I get it. You, you don't like Imagine Dragons and you just think, well, instead of Imagine Dragons, put in a Pantera song, Rod. It's not in our format. And the same thing with Jason. It's not going to play. Uh, Imagine Dragons. Pi He's not going to play 21 pilots. Not on the yet. Show. Not yet. You know? <laughs> because it's, it's not his format. Right, 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 right. So You're not I, expecting you to, I just want you to think about restaurants and you just can't be mad that they don't have a food that you like when the place is packed and you're the only one bitching about no tacos at the steak <laughs> place. I came up with that analogy all on my own. That was pretty Thank good, you. Rod. That was pretty good. I was I was going to use like, hey, you know what? You don't go to a car parts store to buy to buy a ball gag. You know what I mean? You just don't. It's not how that works. See? If Jason's a car guy. He's going to bring it around to some yeah. kind of a monkey wrench thing. But that's, but that's I, did we? I mean, is anybody still listening? Or no? no, no. I doubt okay. it. I wouldn't. But see, what's interesting, Rod, is that you know, it's not just the music that you play. Okay. Spotify has got music. You, you want to just chill out and listen to music all day long. That's great. And a lot of people love to do that. A good radio station. And I'm not saying all radio stations are good. No. A good radio station. Your radio station is a good radio station. You have a, a lot of personalities on the radio station. People want to connect. That's why your show works. You connect. You talk about shit people give a shit about. You're diving into the lifestyle of a Houston person 25 54 18 to whatever your demos are who gives a shit but you're you're living the lifestyle so if you're doing the right things and the music is right you got a winning formula but there's so many radio stations that can't fucking pull that off and they're dog shit they really are bad bad radio stations out there and those are the ones that give the good ones a bad name like a shitty steak restaurant is going to make <laughs> <laughs> right you know what I mean? It's going to make that, that, that analogy, but well, I fucking went to the steakhouse and sucked. Right. You know, we're lucky that we my, work at good stations. I, I tell my bosses all the time. I said, I'm so fucking valuable. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. I'm so valuable. Okay. Spotify doesn't have me. They have every song that we're playing on the station. They don't have me. Spotify doesn't have Jason Ginty. Nope, they've got they every they've got every classic rock song he's playing. Mm -hmm. But believe it or not, and this is for people that there might be a few people that listen to this and watch this podcast that really don't listen to the radio. It really is unbelievable how many people are still touched by the radio. They want that human connection. Why do you think podcasts are doing so well? It's become the ultimate human connection. Correct. People sitting around shooting the shit, you know, mm -hmm. it's become the place. It's become the fireside chat. It's become the gather around the radio moment, even though everyone's doing it individually with their pods. You're going there because you want personality. You can get these songs anywhere. So I do throw it in my boss's faces. I do. Um, I don't go in as arrogant as that, but I'm just. Maybe hey, tomorrow. <laughs> there's a lot of places to get what we serve. But what's uh, what's the difference here? Correct. Right Correct. here. Well, I, and, 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 you know, you're, you're doing a morning show, so you get a little more freedom. I'm just out of one song into the next song. And but you got to come up with even more creative ways because you got to do it quicker. Correct. So you, got, you almost have to be a, a you know, you, I always look at it. I always tell people this. I have to come up with a really kick-ass tweet <laughs> between every song I talk. It's almost what you have to do when you're just just a DJ in between songs. You've got about the same amount of characters. Yeah, that's it. You got to get in, get out, and be really a, 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 an economy of words is kind of the thing. And I've always come at our job in radio from day one. It's like, look, people are listening to the radio first and foremost, at least when I started, for the music. Okay, I don't want to get in the way and talk too much and fuck up their song because that'll piss people off. 
but I want to almost keep the party going between one from one song to the next song. I want to be the bridge, and I want to make sure that, that I'm a very good, solid, interesting bridge between that Leonard Skinner song into that Guns N' Roses tune. Because you don't need me if I can't do that job right. It but just it's goes. Also a piece of, but it's a piece of home, okay? Like, you've been there such a long time, and a lot of people, and especially with you, you know, me, people are on the ride. They're into work. By the time you're on, people are at work, and it's like, right. okay, there's music, and boom, and then, okay, there's Ginty. It's that it's that familiarity. It's like, okay, Ginty's there. Good. Okay, all is right with the world. Okay, there's Ginty. Okay, that was, oh, yeah, that was funny. Great. And then, boom, into the next song. It's like, it's that, that's your co-pilot. That's right. your guy. You know, that's, there's a lot of people that are working by themselves, have a radio on, or, mm -hmm. you know, I'm always thinking radio, but whatever, on the phone, anything. But it's like, there's Ginty. It's all is right with the world. It's me, boom, Ginty. I, I know what time it is. Okay, Nooner's coming up. It's going to be noon. Jason's going to do his thing. They're, they're, that's just how they, they're living their lives. And Spotify doesn't have that. Spotify's cold as fuck. It's song after song after song, you know? Problem with us, you got to put up with some commercials because that's what pays us. So we're not charging you to listen to our radio stations and the commercials are paying us. That's right. So that's, you know, that's the trade-off with that. So you, you got to be pretty fucking charming, <laughs> you know, to say, hey, come back after these and I'll be here and I got a good song for you. <laughs> you know, what's weird is I, was, I spent the week at the beach and, you know, people bring radios and music to the beach. And there was this couple next to me set up the one day and they had, um, they, they were playing classic rock all day. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, all I want to do is not listen to that. Cause it's my day off. You know what I mean? Like I don't, you know, it's, it's the old analogy. You, you work in McDonald's. You're not going to go buy the cheeseburger on your day off. You know what I mean? You're not going in the place. I kind of want to listen to other shit when I'm not at the radio station, you know, they're sitting next to me and they're just jamming journey, Steve Miller, guns and roses, all the stuff that I play and listen to constantly. And they're having a blast. They're laughing. They're singing along. And I'm like, yep. This is why we play the same shit over and over again every day. This is it right here. I'm watching it in real time. These people are having a blast. Of course, there were 75 Coors Lights into their day, but it made <laughs> for a great – they were having so much fun, and I was fucking miserable. <laughs> that I was the beauty of it. <laughs> but for you and I, and of course, you know, we're older, the radio was a magical thing, oh. and it's lost on younger people, you know, because you just can have whatever you want. And this isn't a slam on younger people because, boy, they can have whatever they want whenever they want it. And if anything, it's me being jealous. But the radio was a magic thing for me. And it's going to come up when we talk about Metallica in just a moment, I promise. And it's always been a magical thing. And I thought it was cool. And I get it, people that do what we do for a living – you know, used to be maybe a little bit more put on a pedestal. And, you know, now we're just kind of, we're just like everyday dudes, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that's what I strive for. And I know that's what you go for too, Absolutely. because again, you've got that little bit of time, but you just want, Hey, it's Ginty. I'm, I'm with you, man. We're, I'm working, you're working, you're slinging a hammer, you know, you're swinging a hammer and I'm swinging around some CDs here. So <laughs> I just always felt the combination of the person on the radio and the music, even though you didn't like every song, it's like you were in on it. And it was, and, and I've always really tried to make that and keep that magic. Right. Because it was so important to me when I was young. And I, it's probably going to be lost, you know, on younger people. You know, will my daughter ever listen to the radio? I'll be done by the time she knows what's going on. But, you know, we're these carryovers. Jason and I were these carryovers from kids that just had a radio. And it was pre-MTV. Obviously, it was pre-internet. And the radio was everything. You know, it was. And I still think like that every single day of, okay, it's time to shine. You know, it doesn't matter what happens. That's my stage, man. Mm -hmm. I go in, I still go into the studio. So I hated broadcasting from home. That six weeks we had to do it during COVID. That's my stage. Turn on that mic. That's the curtain opening up. And I, I treat it like that every morning. You're like, Rod, you can't still think that way every single day. Fuck, I don't. I promise you. I'm serious as a heart attack right now. Man, I still get, uh, let's do this, man. It's, 
they know how intense I get. Like even on the show, they're like, you know, trying to chit chat with me in between songs. I'm like, ah, I'm getting ready for the next thing, man. I got shit to do. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. There's no goofing around. I do that every day. I work for my home studio, but I'm in here and I walk up the stairs and it's game faces on. I'm ready to go. I've prepared. I got my notes. I'm ready to go and talk about Leonard Skinner and Guns N' Roses for a couple hours. But I also have this voice in my head that says, hey, man, the reason you do this is because you used to listen to the radio when you were a little kid. Yeah. And that was a long time ago. And you loved it. That's why you chose this path or you fought so hard to get into radio. And that you is about, why what did you like about those guys. You know, like it's still it, you still think about the people that you listen to. What made you like them? I got to try to do something like that. I want to make that connection. Yeah. So every day I make sure. And I also know that I'm lucky. I'm sitting in air conditioning every day. And it's hot as balls in New Orleans and Houston <laughs> right now. I think about those guys because I've driven around and I hear a guy go by on his motorcycle and he's cranking up the station, you know, or I see guys on a construction site later in the afternoon and they got us cranked up. I'm like, I want to make sure that I can do my little piece in their day to maybe get them to laugh or get them to grin, or maybe if I really hit it home, start a discussion with their buddies about, yeah, man, if I come up with a fact like 1 billion Guns and Roses streams and I break down the math that that's only like 30 grand a year per dude, they're like, fuck, man, we're making more than that. Or they start a discussion. Now, you never know that happens because you're stuck in your box. But right. I hope that those things are happening. That's what I strive to do. I want to be that little ray of light of sunshine in your day. God, that sounded oh, terrible. That sounded no. really, really terrible. All right. Didn't come well, up the way I meant. I, I look forward to comments. Uh, we check all of our socials. So at Plate Pants Pod. If you have questions, and if I can't, there's not much that I won't tell you about behind the scenes. Jason's the same. Oh, shut uh, I'll tell you everything. I'll tell you, I'd love to sit down and just tell people all this shit. <laughs> there's, just, there's just not a whole lot of secrets anymore, nor should there be. And it kind of goes with the whole transparency of the whole gig, man. So I, I do look forward to it. I think this is going to spark some other conversations. I do. I want to leave it because I, I want to talk about it. it's a very big. This podcast will come out on a Thursday, August 12th, and it's a very big anniversary. It's Metallica. You know it as the Black Album, the 30th anniversary. So there are some fun things going on with the album. There's a huge tribute album coming on um but it is going to lead into our top fives and it's going to be our favorite metallica songs so this time i get some comments holy shit so we're gonna we're gonna get into that coming up in just a moment but i wanted to mention one of our great sponsors uh of course pirates of the quarter so new orleans is partying they're having a good time over there new orleans an amazing city i think everybody in houston knows how much the city means to me and and just me going back and i'm i get to go back i'm still coming in i know red dress run is canceled but i'm still coming in and you can still take tours with pirates of the quarter so Pirates, real pirates roam the streets of the French Quarter, and it's real history, and it's so rich in history. It's so much fun to hear about. While you're still partying, you're walking around, you hear these incredible tales of the smuggling and the sword fights and the cannons and the rum from the Pirates of the Quarter. It is the most unique walking tour in the French Quarter. It's real easy to book at piratesofthequarter.com. Figure out when you're coming in, and then boom, get on the social media. They've got everything at Pirates of the Quarter. But if you're planning a trip to New Orleans, go to the website, and then boom. Okay, this is the weekend we're there. Go see when the tour is and get on it. Book it early. Discover pirate history of New Orleans at piratesofthequarter.com. Links at the Play Pants podcast page and the YouTube page. Dude, I'm holding it up. And, you know, I love visual aids, right? I love, the, like, on our YouTube channel, I always, like, if we talk about Pearl Jam, I'm going to throw up the Pearl Jam album. I just, while you were doing the commercial for our great sponsor, I'm like, oh, I know. Let me go grab my Metallica CD. I hold it up. <laughs> black, it's black, dude. Fucking, it's black. I'm an idiot. I, mean, I couldn't be any dumber. Jesus. It's Christ. a CD case. It's, it's fucking uh, black. Yeah. It's, uh, there you go. Stupid. What a dick. Sick Flex, you have the Metallica album, and I, I don't think I would do a podcast with you if you didn't have the Metallica album. I got the, um, I got a vinyl, too. I got a, I got a special uh, vinyl, like 182. I don't know shit about vinyl, but it's the heavy, thick. And it's only got like one song per side, so it's like six records okay. together. It's fucking cool, and who cares? It's so, awesome, though. <laughs> 
He gets so upset about the story, then he goes, who fucking cares? It doesn't matter at the end of the day, man. Who gives a shit? So today, 30 years ago, Metallica, the Black Album, is available for purchase. It goes out, and it becomes the album of Metallica, and it puts them on the map to superstardom, okay? Right. My bit of nerdism on the Metallica Black Album is Enter Sandman was the first single and it was released July 29th. Now think about when we get singles from bands now. We get singles from bands of albums that are six months away. Right. They released Enter Sandman two weeks before the album dropped. So I am working as a cook. I'm in the restaurant and I am listening to uh, the radio station before Jason and I worked there and the afternoon drive guy meltdown has the premiere of the brand new Metallica. He's going to play it. And the, I, I, now I don't remember what day, but I remember exactly where I'm standing. The radio, the boom box was above the sink where we washed the dishes in the back of the house. And I'm listening. I, I heard the first spin of Metallica. Damn. So I, I know where I'm standing. This is what's the freaky part. I know where I'm standing July 29th, 1991. Okay. <laughs> because of music. Because of the radio. Yeah. It's still magic to me because we're not really in it yet. You and I, <laughs> we're, we're interning. We're doing some stuff, right? 91? Yeah. yeah. I think you're interning. Yeah, yeah, I think there's interns going on. Internships. So I stand there and I hear, and I, I know Metallica already because I'm, I'm already in on Ride the Lightning. That's when I, That was my entrance point. And then they had, you know, they had four albums before that, before the Black Album. And I'm standing there, and it sounds like no other Metallica that we've ever heard before. And I'm not so engrossed with Metallica that I'm hating this new direction. I immediately fell in love with the song. I thought it was the coolest thing I ever fucking heard. Enter Sandman. I know where I'm at. I know the first spin. That's what the Black Album means to me. Holy shit, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. But stood there. I'm just like, oh, my God. This this is, I mean, think about, like, Master of Puppets and all this shit. Think about what it sounded like. Dun, 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 dun. It, this has got a groove to it. Metallica yeah. doesn't groove. No. Oh. But I loved it. But I loved it. And I'm sure there's a bunch of super hardcore metalhead guys that, you know, everything off of Master of Puppets is, like, the greatest. And, and I remember it wasn't met. Everybody didn't like it. I absolutely loved it. Listen, one, I thought it was the best thing I ever heard. I can't tell you the first time I heard it, but I know I've heard it a billion times since. And, and it's still right. a great listen. You know, I don't need to hear it again, you know, but you hear it at a sporting events and they start with it. And you're like, yeah, let's go fucking win. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's great. Pump you up music. And uh, I just remember a lot of guys that were into Metallica didn't like it very much because they said that it was the sellout album. They called mm -hmm. them pussies. They called them all the things. And I'm like, I, go, I don't know what the problem is, man. These are fucking great songs. What, what's your problem? I don't get it. It sounds good. They finally made an album that actually had a good sound to it. It was well produced. I, when we started talking about this Metallica stuff, I went back and just dug up all the old shit. I'm like, okay, you know what? I haven't listened to the old shit in a long time. A long time. I just don't. I don't sit around and just thrash in my living room. It's not for I me anymore. I pop some on every now and then. I pop some Metallica on every now and then, some older stuff. Ride the lightning. I've got a. I've got the Metallica pinball machine here. Oh, and yeah. kids were playing it this last weekend. And, you know, you can pick different songs. I'm just like, yeah, this. It, some of that stuff really hits. It's great. But then I was, the more I listened to it, the more I'm like, you know what? These are all fucking so just awesome songs. And just like, oh, I wanted to go like smash shit in my living room, but I knew I couldn't do that. <laughs> the more I listen to it and, and coming back with fresh ears, you know, cause I haven't listened to a lot of that older shit in a long time. The, the vocals were always kind of buried and shitty. <laughs> and I know that speed metal and all that shit, you know, I'm not a speed metal guy, but you go back and you listen to the quality. If, if they had had the kind of production on some of those older albums that they did for the black album, Holy shit, those songs would have really popped even more. Yeah, it would have been different. I mean, I, I like the rawness of the oh, early yeah. stuff. Of and course, he, of course. So Bob Rock was this massive producer, and they, they got him on board for the Black Album. And Metallica liked 
what was going on with uh, Dr. Feelgood. Uh, yeah, I with loved. They, they kind of liked that sound, what Motley Crue had going on. So they brought in Bob Rock and um, he was hard on them. They were rough on him. You know, there's documentaries, there's movies on it and everything. And Bob Rock said, I'm never working with these guys again. He ended up working with them again. But you're right in the vocals. You're right. You're spot on with the vocals because James learned to sing. The stuff was great early. I mean, when we do our top fives, I'm going back to kill them all on one of my songs for top five. So he didn't sing that bad. It just no. was different. It was different. Yeah. Um, I've always heard a story about James. He saw the Chris Isaac video, the black and white video. Um, Not wicked uh, game. I, wicked game. Wicked and game, he right? said, he goes, I want to sing like that. He goes, that's what I want to sing like. Can Jesus. you imagine? Cause think about, okay. So here's the singles. Five singles off of the Black Album, Enter Sandman, The Unforgiven, Nothing Else Matters, Wherever I May Roam, Sad But True, and Don't Tread On Me got, got some airplay as well. Correct. But, but The Unforgiven, James on Ride the Lightning can't sing Unforgiven. He can't. No. Okay, now go listen to the difference between Fade to Black, which is an older song, and how it, he just sang differently, and Bob Rock got that out of him, you yeah. know? And uh, the album is is timeless. Just like you and I, we gush uh, over Appetite for Destruction. It's 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 a perfect album. And what's hard for you, what's hard for me, is those songs were so played over and over and over. And we still play some Metallica on our station. Yep. Yeah, all, but, all the time. We, we play the big ones. And check the earlier part of this podcast. You know, don't give me a hard time why we don't play Orion. Okay, go look at the, the hits, okay, for the four horsemen compared to Enter Sandman. Correct. So, so this album, it, it was such a game changer for them, and it just launched them into the stratosphere. The one thing I do know about 1991, I didn't grow up working in a record store, but that's where SoundScan started. Mm -hmm. Before SoundScan, and I, I, I can talk a little bit about it, but the record charts were so loosey-goosey, and they probably still are to this day, but how many albums people were selling? You were kind of on your honor. Metallica sound scan was the barcode. And Correct. they were zinging each one of those albums. And that's what started the real cataloging of how many and keeping track of how many albums sold. 1991 was the game changer for sound scan. That's when it came in. And I know Metallica was one of the early albums on that. They had sold over 30 million copies worldwide. At least that was one of the stats I saw. 30 million copies of the Black Album. That's ridiculous. That's a lot of fucking albums, man. And I've probably bought it three or four times. Well, I did. I've got, I've got the vinyl and I've got the damn CD. I'm sure I had it. No, I didn't have the cassette for that, I don't think. But, you know, it's one of those albums you're just like, okay, if you don't have it, what the hell are you doing? You got to go get it. <laughs> you got to have it. And I've probably downloaded singles off of uh, the album at, at, at different times as well. For sure. So, so James is driving all his cool hot rods because of me, basically. Um, <laughs> what I like is the, the 30th anniversary thing they're doing. You know, a lot of times they'll just remaster an album and throw it out there. But I like the, the idea where they had all these different artists cover the songs. I love this idea. I love 50. this idea. So 53 tracks, and they've got a little bit of everybody. It's great. So they're going to go in, and they're going to re-release the Black album, but it's going to be the Black the Black List album. And I'm trying to think what we've played. So we played a couple of country guys on the air. The Weezer and, you know, cover. Dude, uh, the Weezer cover. The Weezer. We played the, I played the whole thing. Now, I got a hold of that. The record label sent that to me while I was on the air. I sent it to my boss, and I'm like, the email, I can, I, I can dig it up. We got to fucking play this, dude. This good. is awesome. I it mean, was really we well done. This. Yeah, it's um, great. It was good. So 53 tracks, singer-songwriters, country artists, electronic, hip-hop artists. It's, there's not a whole lot of bands and there's not a whole lot of albums that could pull in people from all genres and say, hey, do you want to be a part of this? Yes, Metallica. Of course I do. They're in rarefied air. It's because of this album that they're in that rarefied air. Um, you know, Guns N' Roses, they, they had it out of the gate. Yeah. It took Metallica till their fifth album. That's not to say that those other albums weren't great. 
But what happens is when you have a black album and you have it pop, then you're going to go back and get all of that stuff. The best thing that ever happened to End Justice for All was the Black Album. All so of then the you went back, yeah. All of them, all of them, of all course. Them. Of them. You went back and you found all that old stuff. And then album sales go up for everything because mm-hmm. of the Black Album. It was the game changer for them. And it took them into an area where they became arena rock stars. And they just never really stopped they kept going up from there and they're one of the handful of stadium bands that's it yeah there's not many there's really not many i mean how many bands how many bands jason have you seen in a stadium in in your lifetime metallica is one of them for me metallica rolling stones guns and roses yep yeah i think that's kind of (laughs) it I haven't seen anybody in the, in the stadium stadium. Setting. Right. I saw Coldplay. They played the stadium here. Coldplay is a stadium band, man. It's weird. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, certain cities, you know, they're not going to play yeah. everywhere, but yeah. When they choose to be, I mean, not, uh, listen, I'm saying Ed Sheeran, there's stadium bands out there, but there's not many, but you just said yourself, you've maybe seen four rock shows. That's it. It's the band show, not festivals, you know, no, no. monsters of rock I've been to and stuff. But Van Halen was never a stadium band on their own. Festivals, oh. yes. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Metallica, so Metallica plays the stadium. Yeah. And the Rolling Stones play a stadium. So there you have it. There's your two. You know, I mean, it. yeah, for the it, old guys. It, it's because of the Black Album. But then they they had huge hits after that Black Album too. It sure. just they just launched into a, a a career that hasn't ended. Um, you know, they're still. They're still putting out music and they're still recording. Music. They're working on a new album right now. Does it, but they play it. They play their new songs and they get away right. with it. Because Iron Metallica. Maiden, Iron Maiden, every other tour, every other tour, Iron Maiden puts out an album and they go and they play a bunch of those songs and then they'll play hits. Then the next tour, the next year, it'll just be all hits. Correct. But you know, Rolling Stones will still put out an album and they'll sneak on one or two of the songs. It's fun for them. They don't give a shit. They're going to play Start Me Up, but they, they want to play a couple of their new songs. Uh, Metallica is not afraid to push their new stuff on you at all, you know, because they can. They know you're going to come back for it. And I haven't listened to the new stuff, the, I, the last couple albums. I, I might have thrown it on and had it on, but nothing. All right. I, don't, I don't dive into it and go nuts for it. It's just I, I'm not to the point where I just want to hear that. And that's where I think the top five list that we're about to get into is going to be interesting because uh, I can't, I can't, the Metallica is so hard to do. It's so hard to do. And I'm like, I love heavy music, but I think I've, I, I, like I said, I don't, I can't tell you the last time I threw the ride, the lightning album out of my house. I don't think I have. <laughs> and I love it. I love that was it. my, in, that was my introduction to Metallica. The first time I ever heard a Metallica song, was fight fire with fire. Jesus. And I heard and I heard that blistering double bass. And I didn't think a human could do it. I, I just I I just I'd never heard it before. I had never heard that thrash, that thrash the tempo that was being conducted in, on the double bass. And I had a double bass and I just never even thought of trying to play that fast <laughs> to try to keep the tempo going. You know, you right. can do a couple of, you know, you can do some some rudiments or you can do like some fills but I never thought of, I never thought of my feet moving that fast. I didn't think it was humanly possible. I remember arguing the guy, that's a machine. That's not a human being playing that. Oh, wow. And Lars, I'll say it, he's a shitty drummer. <laughs> but when I'm a kid listening to that, I didn't think it was human. I didn't. Oh. And it was amazing. And that got me into a whole, oh, then Anthrax can do that too. And then, you know, then I started jumping into that stuff. And that really, that fast that's the signature for me of the thrash sound if you want to go like the big the big thrash bands it's that it's just that rapid fire machine gun double bass i didn't believe it when i heard it but that's where i jumped in on ride the lightning see and, I remember, uh, it's just crazy i remember listening to that stuff going holy shit it's so fast <laughs> like i just i wasn't a musician so i was just like <laughs> how the fuck I, I thought it was a machine. I thought there's no way there's a dude playing that. I'm like, there's yeah. no way it can't be possible. How are you playing that fast? It's insane. And then the guitar playing along with it and stuff. And the guitars, those, those guitars on those older, older Metallica albums, those still sound great. They yeah. sound so good. 
Like they sounds, I had headphones on earlier today, listening to a bunch of shit. I'm like, Oh my God, this sounds great. But the vocals are just buried in the back. And they're like, ah, I see what this band was all about at that time. And Bob rock brought that whole other world out in them. And without Bob rock, I'm telling you right now, that black album doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't work. Those songs are not the same. It doesn't. I work. agree. It doesn't I agree. Work. The producer, it's, the producer is everything. And Metallica might still be just kind of that thrash band, just kind of there, always going to have their fans. They were always going to be there. But without that black album, without that black album produced by Bob Rock, who fought to change lyrics, change melodies, tune things up, and do all this shit, doesn't happen. Just like Def Leppard doesn't happen. Go listen, I was going to say, without Mutt Lang. My mouth. Go listen to Def Leppard pre Mutt Lang. You know, wasn't going to happen. They have ruined him. I mean, it, you know, you, you, you live and die by it, you know, because uh, Pyromania is still an unfucking believable album. It's great. so great. I love and it. then Hysteria, okay, this is a this is this is my sister's band now, you know. But <laughs> yes. you can't deny how huge it is. Yeah. But what what Mutt Lang did with that band, go listen to and I get it. On through the night, I love that early stuff. That early stuff is amazing. It's so thin sounding. It it's is thin. The songs are great. But just it doesn't have Mutt Lang's hands on it. Nope. And then Pyromania, you put on it, it was just like, <sighs> and, then, and then Hysteria was like, you know, there's 6,000 vocal tracks on a song. And yeah, it's a little um, too much. Okay. Th- you brought up something you said you were listening. And that's a great thing of these top fives because I got to go and listen to a few things. You know, I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm arguing about this song. Well, does this go here? I need to hear this a little bit. So I like that you're digging down this rabbit hole. I'm going to let you go first this week. God uh, damn this, it. Is, this is your top five favorite. That's our escape every week. Yep. Your favorite Metallica songs. What is great about this is that, like you said, it got me on a rabbit hole. Like all afternoon, I'm like, that's all I heard. And I'm like, okay, I'm good. I'm good. I, I came into this thing today pretty aggressive. Yeah, I was fired up. So now I'm going to be listening to some Metallica in the old house for a little while. You know the best place to listen to Metallica is in your car. It's totally the old, the best place to listen. It's it great absolutely drive. is. All right. So my top five favorite Metallica songs, and this is going to change. Damage Inc. Master of Puppets is number five. It's great song. fucking manly. I love the way it starts off. And you're like, oh, this is nice. And then all of a sudden it just goes, well, bam. And you're like, Pfft. You're just dead. At the end, you're dead. Our dear friend, Tim Optograf, has a damage ink. It was his first tattoo on his shoulder up here. It was the skull and the bat <laughs> damage ink. That was his first <laughs> tattoo. Jesus, that's hardcore. So man. he'll be happy you've got that in the top five. Tim, I'm sorry if you're sticking around. I don't have that in my top five. Uh, see, I'm, I'm here for you, Tim. Uh, yeah, damage <laughs> ink, number five. Uh, this one, I'll take shit for it, but I don't care because I liked the difference and and you know everyone gave metallica shit for the black album oh they're sellouts man their sound has changed man and then they cut their hair for the load album man and then they were really pussies because you know cutting your hair makes you a pussy apparently uh mama said from the load album it's this country twangy song in the video james wearing a cowboy hat yeah it yeah, is yeah, yeah so yeah. fucking totally good forgot about that song it's a complete departure from everything. It's awesome. I love that tune. It's on the Load album. It's called Mama Said. I'm telling you, go listen to it. It's great. Um, it's in the cover of that album. Is it really? Or are you just making that's that shit true. up? No, that's their jizz. That's yes. jizz. Load. The cover of Load is jizz. There you go. Dude, how long you have I been radio? Day. And I never knew that. You learn something every day, don't you? And that's go why they the call- album cover right now. It's disgusting. That's, that's why they call it low. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Dude, pull it up. Pull it up. Oh, dude, that's messed up. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm holding dude. up on the YouTube channel. It looks like flames. I always thought it was just fire. Yeah, it, it, everybody thought it was fire. Well, they get kicked in the balls before they tugged one out. Load. Oh, so that's why it's called load. Yeah, dude. I feel like a five-year-old just learned about his big wheel got him stolen or something. Oh, my. All right. Don't lie. In the YouTube comments, who was today years old when they found out that load was load? Dude, you know what's funny? As I looked up Mama Said and I was like going through the Metallica songs and load, I'm like, 
load. I, and I was literally thinking, I wonder why they named it load. I swear to God, dude, no, no joke. I'm like, I'm all a load of heavy songs, a load of this. Wow. And then in my younger gate, my younger days, I used to be able to reload. That was the <laughs> album after that. So go oh, ahead. Okay. We'll go on to number uh, three, fade to black, ride the lightning. Fade to black is great. I love fade to black. Fucking great Fade to black is great. There's just, it's, it really is a huge difference in that didn't make my top five, man. I love that song. It is cool. Just, but it was, James could always sing. He just couldn't sing like he did on the Black album. He didn't, right. he couldn't sing with what, Bob, with what Bob Rock working with him. Correct. But Fade to Black, I love that too. Master of Puppets at number two. <sighs> just something about that just fucking smacks right out of the gate. And then at number one, and this might be too easy and too on the nose, but for whom the bell tolls, Ride the Lightning. I do love the Ride the Lightning album, man. For whom the bell tolls. By the way, the bell in that uh, song, fake. It's just a sound effect they found in the studio. ACDC went and used a real bell for their bell. They had it made. It's a one-ton bell that they use on tour. They did a real bell. Metallica used a cheesy, shitty sound effect. Because they didn't have the dough. No, of course not. Not for that album. They were still on probably Mega Force Metal Blade record <laughs> label, you know, back then. Yeah, yeah they weren't um, putting their loads on album covers at that point, dude. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, no, I still love Whom the Bell Tolls. And uh, honorable mentions, because you know what? It's my top five. And I didn't throw these in because I don't think they count. I love Metallica's cover of Whiskey in the Jar and Stone Cold Crazy by Queen. I love those two covers, but I didn't want to throw covers in there. And they're not in my top five anyway, but I always love those two covers. We played the shit out of Turn the Page, but boy, Turn the Page is such a great song too. It's a great and song. Cover just... of that. Being out on the road, you probably just got so burnt on the classic yeah. rock version of it that you didn't even want to hear anybody covering it. But just those lyrics and everything, man. I mean, it's just... It's great. It's, it's great. It's Bob. It's Bob Seger's Stairway to Heaven, right? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's great. It's a great song. All, All right, right. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, dude. We're not that. F- <laughs> I'm I'm giggling as you're doing your list. Um, in at number five, I struggle with this just because you hear songs. You do you penalize a song that you're sick of? We yeah. talked about this with Stairway to Heaven. It's a fucking great song. You're sick of it. You hate it. You're like, oh, God, I hate it. Okay, but you're right. It's a great song. Well, but you're think of, sick of it. It's it, it's difficult. Think of this. We just talked about how great the Black Album is. I didn't have one song on there. I love all those songs. I play them every day. I, I can't listen to them anymore. I, you know, they're great songs. Okay. I love them. It's just not my top five. Because of my story that I told you earlier, because today is the 30th anniversary, I felt it was a little sacrilegious not to put a song from the Black Album on there. What are you With- saying, man? That's bullshit. I just told you I didn't do it for that reason. <laughs> I, I felt the complete opposite. I'm like, the whole reason we're talking about this is because of the damn Black Album. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. You're and right, hearing right. Enter Sandman and hearing them sound so different, I, this, the, the moment was special. And I love how everything today on this show does seem to be tying in the magic of radio was mm-hmm. the first segment. You know, I, I kind of wound it up and kind of wrapped it up with the magic of radio and hearing that song on the radio. It's different than it's different than you're fucking listening to something on Spotify. You're hearing something on the radio. Somebody's playing something on the radio. I still get to do world premieres, you know, real world premieres. Right. And we play a song for the first time. And I hope there's a kid that is excited because I'm excited playing it. It's the first time it's being played on the radio. I heard that first spin of Enter Sandman. You've played it a million times. I've played it a million times. It is, it's kind of their stairway to heaven. <laughs> totally. You know, it's, it's not really a ballad, but. Still great. And it's, you know, it's their sweet home Alabama. It's a great song. It's in at number five, Enter Sandman. You cannot no. penalize a song because you're sick of it. I did. Uh, Number four, <laughs> I did. Uh, welcome, welcome home, sanitarium. Oh, fuck, I had that in there too, man. I took it off. <laughs> so great. At, I mean, it's just eerie. It's everything. The buildup of the song, the mm-hmm. length of it. I normally, because we're radio, we want you know nice 
give me three and a half minutes. Get the fuck into the chorus. Verse, chorus, verse. Metallica is like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not to the extent of Tool that are just going to don't care at all. Metallica still wants radio airplay. Whether they talk about it or not, they still want radio airplay. So uh, Welcome Home Sanitarium. Uh, I love, 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 love that song. That's in at number four. In at number three, going way back, 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 back. Seek and destroy, man. It's yes. thin. It's so thin. See, we don't have enough money to play songs on this podcast, so no. we have to just we have to just sing them. And I'll probably get dinged for that. Um, seek and destroy. They're kids, dude. They're yeah. fucking kids. It's great. They're kids, and they don't know they're going to be the biggest band in the world. And it's fun to listen to still to this day. That album is fun to listen to. You know, with the sickle and the blood, and it's um, it's a fun album to listen to. Yeah. And they were kids that were doing something different. And you want to talk about just James's voice? He sounds like a kid on that album. They're all pimple face. Turn over the cover. You got to oh, have yeah. the vinyl yeah. of that too. Don't come at me with your CDs. Ooh. You got to have the vinyl, and you got to turn it over, and you got to see the acne on Lars' face. You have oh, yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. It's great. It's like, I want to get in there and squeeze the little zits. Uh, Come over here, little fella. Come uh, over here. Seek and Destroy in at number three. That was the original load. Yep. (laughs) In at number two, Master of Puppets. Jason had Master of Puppets at number two on his list. Um, You know, some people call it the greatest, you know, metal album of all time. I don't, but you you just, you can't, you're, uh, you're batting out of order now. If 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 blacks if a Black Sabbath album isn't your greatest metal album of all time, I'm pretty close to friend off it. Yeah, but is Master one of the greatest metal albums of all time? Is yeah for sure. Yeah. Uh, for whom the bell tolls? In at number one, same as oh, same as you do. Wow. Same as you. Same as you. Uh, not everybody knows that's the bass. Do 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 do. That's fucking Cliff Burton. That's awesome. That's a bass. That's a bass line. That's the bass guitar. You have to see them live to know that, or at least seen some live footage of them. Um, most people don't know that's the bass. That's Cliff Burton. That's a trained ear, and that is a, a musically trained person playing that. That's Cliff Burton, and that's what they lost. Um, Jesus. He was he was special. He was um, he was the guy that knew music theory. He was the guy that knew song structure and where things mm-hmm. went. And he was leading. Those guys were writing songs, you know, and he was in on it. He was the best musician in the band. Damn. Um, and those other guys became good. You know, James. James is one of the best rhythm guitar players out there, man. He drives the band. Lars sucks on the drums, man. And, <laughs> you know, and, and Robert Trujillo is my favorite bass player. But when you go see, when you go see Metallica live, it's James. It's like it, 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 Lars is just trying to keep up, you know, it, he, the guitar is driving that. It's not the rhythm section. It's right. James. But um, for whom the bell tolls, Fox, great. Come on. Look, it's so great, right? Oh, I just had it on today, and I was like, oh, I forgot how good. And it just keeps building and building and building, and it's so fucking cool. I wanted to ask you this. I've heard throughout the years, Lars is a shitty drummer. Lars is a shitty drummer. <laughs> Where'd what, you hear that? What is it, everybody? What What is it about him that's shitty? You can't. I mean, you know, you listen to it. You go to the show. It sounds good enough to me. I'm not a musician, so to me, I'm like, fuck, it's cool. The live stuff is the live stuff is really sloppy. He's just all um, over the place. Yeah, before they went and did a lot of overdubs, they should have gone in and done more overdubs. Uh, the live stuff is really, really sloppy, and it's um, he just, you know, he doesn't do anything special, right? I guess. I mean, when you look at, you know, we just lost Joey Jordanson, right? And it, it doesn't matter because I know, like Slipknot, that screaming, that's I know that that's not your wheelhouse. But if you go and just watch a couple of Slipknot videos and watch Joey Jordanson, it's just just next level. And Lars is in this metal band, and he's just I, I never felt that the drums were driving the band. Right. I never got that feeling that they, that you know the rhythm section. And you got these. They had great. Jason Newstead was a really really good bass player. Not as good as Robert Trujillo and. I, I, it's hard to say. 
you know, I, it's hard to say Cliff was so young, you know, when Cliff Burton passed away. But, you know, he was a really, really talented musician. And Lars is just, he's the weakest member of the band. He just wow. happens to write. He writes. That's so what keeps him there. He writes and he's the mouthpiece uh, of right. the band. So he's not going anywhere. It's his band. Yeah. It's his band. He's the weakest one in the band. The That's other guys crazy. are really good, though. That's what kind of blows. They're all really, really good. He's having a tough time keeping up, man. Those songs, they did those songs when he was young. And, you know, he does he does fight fire with fire. He's out. Like, he's out. He's lights out. <laughs> he needs <laughs> to be. That's an intermission for them. Yeah, I mean, that's to, to, to play that today. I mean, we're going to slow anybody. that thing down. Yeah, that's, that's just an insane show to get through. I mean, and he's not exactly, well, he's not that young anymore. And he, I don't think he really stays in great shape for when you see him lately. He, I mean, he's not sloppy, but you know what? To play those songs, you got to be in fucking sick shape. You got to yeah. be. I don't see him running every day to stay in cardio fitness to play those songs. So I, I always wondered, I'm like, well, I always keep hearing he's just not a good drummer. You know, yeah. he's not too drummy then, I guess I can, I can, I can, I can't give him that one. Cause rush for you was a little too drummy. I believe you said, and I never wanted to jump through a fucking zoom camera more in my life. Yeah. I thought and Neil Peart was a little too drummy. Kick you in your throat. God damn. Uh, I, I still take shit for that. Just so you know. <laughs> I, we are going to want to hear, I keep going back to you guys and interacting with us. Of course, we're going to want to hear your top five Metallica songs. Yeah. Nobody, I mean, outside of you going to load. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't believe it. Think about it. it. I didn't do anything past the Black Album. I'm, I'm a first five guy. Yeah, uh, Metallica. Yeah. I'm a first five guy. I think Load's great. I think Reload's great. Garage Days Revisited. Um the, the the first Metallica albums are just, you know, you get, you, you, it, that was the band. That was the band. Not and, that the later stuff is is bad. It's just when you go to a concert, you want to hear those first five albums. Absolutely. And, and, and the Black Album introduced me to Metallica. It really did. I didn't know shit about them until the Black Album. I was like, wait a minute, who is Metallica? And I went, oh, okay. And then I dove into all the old shit. And I was like, holy fuck, this is great. We're out, we got to take a break, dude. Um if you're going to party in Houston, dude, Astros baseball, we're getting, you know, we're in August now, man. Things are starting to heat up, man. Lucky's pub West I 10 at Barker Cypress Astros baseball. They got it on over 40 TVs. Uh, the, the, the game day specials are ridiculous. They, the food is delicious. Absolutely amazing food. The pizza, the best pizza on the best side. They got the killer wings, the burgers. And of course, I mean, can you even, do you even let people out of the place without them trying the Philly cheesesteak egg rolls? Isn't there like a rule now in there or something? You're allowed to leave without trying them, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't. That's, that's ridiculous. You need to make a rule or something, dude. Those things are famous. Steak night every Thursday night. Listen to the podcast and then head over to steak night every single Thursday. Check out Lucky's Pub West Facebook page for all the details. Lucky's Pub West always and ice cold beer at a fair price. It's right there, I-10, at Barker Cypress. Now, you're coming in this weekend to New Orleans. I'll be there, bro. Uh, the Red Dress Run was something that I love. My wife grew to love this, and Fun. it's her Fun. birthday weekend, so we would kind of make it her thing, you know? My wife's birthday, Red Dress Run. She loves New Orleans, which is great. I wouldn't push, I, you know, I would never make her go do something. It's her birthday, and right. she always wants to go in for it. So we're still going to come in, even though at this late stage, uh, that was canceled. Jazz Fest was canceled. 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 Dude. We were going we were gonna to open the show with uh, some of this talk, and then we both just realized it's such a bummer, and it's important thing. That I, th I, think, I feel like we still have a few important things to talk about. Uh, on this podcast, if you could really call them important, but the cancellations, bro, are rolling in. First of all, just tell me the, how do you explain to somebody that doesn't live in new Orleans, you know, what jazz fest means to the city and how much merchants in the city oh. was looking forward to this show and the fucking rolling stones, the biggest booking in the history of jazz fest. Again, they rebooked the Rolling Stones and they canceled them for the second time. 
Yeah, it's it's a it's a beating. I know, and and I think most people like when I got the the alert, I was like, oh, oh, that makes sense. Like, you almost knew it was gonna happen because things were starting to bubble up. And Louisiana is doing terrible right now. Our numbers are through the roof. Our hospitals are filled. So you kind of got the feeling they were gonna start canceling shit. I was surprised it took them so long to cancel the red dress run. Um, and my son is so excited. He was so excited about seeing the Foo Fighters for the first time, second time. So I was on. with him. A, I was with him a couple of years ago when he was so rocking exciting. out and God. singing lyrics and singing every single song. I mean, yep. I, you know, that was fun for us to watch Henry rocking out to the Foo Fighters. So I was looking forward to standing there watching him rock out again. He was so like, "Are you kidding?" Like he was pissed. Now the key, he doesn't swear. He's he's going to be thirteen, and he won't swear, and it's great. And you can just see on his face, he's, you just you just saw him wanting to say "fuck." <laughs> You just saw it coming at him. He was like, are you serious? He was Dad so, says it enough for all of us, kid. Yeah, Don't pretty worry. much. But he was so bummed out. But you know what? It, I think a lot of factors go into this. Like for the Jazz Fest, you know, think about the amount of workers that work these festivals. you got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who have to work. you got to make sure they're not sick. Do you have to make sure these workers have their shots or they're not, you know, you got to test everybody. Things yeah. start to get real weird, man, when you start thinking about peeling back the layers. Oh, they canceled my concert. That sucks. Yeah, but you got to look past some of the obvious factors. Like, you know, you're going to bring hundreds of thousands, I guess, people to New Orleans. Might right. not be the best idea right now, you know, and I get why they did it. Is it disappointing? Yeah, because you keep taking these thumps over the head. You know, here we thought, <laughs> here we all thought, all right, man, we're moving. We They start put opening shit up in the springtime. Here we go. We're back, baby. They're booking shows. You know, I bug you place. every week on this show. When are they going to announce Jazz Fest, dude? When are they going to announce yeah. Jazz Fest? I, you know, I had my weeks, months back, my quick five minute interview with Dave Grohl. I put him on the spot, dude. When you know Jazz Fest is coming back, you your show got canceled. With are you coming back to New Orleans when they you know when they rebook this thing and. You know, I got my vibe off of that. I'm like, okay, man, Foo Fighters, they're going to be a part of this. And then they were a part of it. And they were. Th th I don't think there's been a podcast that you and I have done together that we haven't mentioned Jazz Fest. In some, <laughs> it, it's just a mention, right? We need to get them as a sponsor or something, man. I was, <laughs> so I, I understand it. It doesn't fucking make it any better. It doesn't make it easier. You can still be mad and agree with it. It's just like, fuck, I want to have some fun Absolutely. in my life. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So a couple things, a couple things. Uh, uh, let me back up and we go with Live Nation, who is the biggest concert promoter in America. Correct. They came out with something this week. I didn't understand it when I first heard it. And it took me a little bit to understand. They are taking it off of their plate and they are putting it on the artist's. And they are using the verbiage, we are encouraging artists to do vaccine-only shows. Or you can get a test, and if you, can, if you can bust out a negative test within 72 hours of walking through that gate, they're encouraging bands to do this. Live Nation doesn't want to do that everywhere. They're putting it on the bands. Wow. OK, so they come hmm. out with this. And the, again, their verbiage is they're encouraging it. So when we're recording Wednesday night now, August 11th, Jason Isbell was supposed to play. I don't know Jason Isbell from Jason Bisbell. No, but he's playing the big venue. He's playing the Woodland, so he must be a pretty big dude. Tickets were I, I don't know if it was a sold out show, but, you know, tickets sold. Well, this is what I'm getting from the inside. The show was canceled yesterday, the day before the show. He wanted, and this is what I'm hearing, he wanted to jump on this. Hey, I, I think this is a good idea. Maybe, you know, I'm here in Texas. Let's do a vaccinated only show and let's get people, you know, rapid testing and let's get this all set up. And I think they said, dude, you're playing tomorrow. <laughs> right. We, uh, we, uh, we, we just came out with that, but, you know, we're going to need a little time to get, there's some infrastructure that needs to happen here. Yeah. Or whatever. And this is, I'm speculating on some of this, but I think I, I got an idea of what happened here. 
and they just had to cancel the show. Correct. So there's a, there's a situation that we talked about today with Bonnaroo. And I think most people have probably heard of Bonnaroo. Maybe you've heard of Coachella. Bonnaroo's had tickets on sales sale for, for a m- couple of months now. They just announced that it is now, now keep in mind, all these tickets are on sale and people went out and bought tickets. They just announced that their show that they've already had tickets on sale for is going to be a proof of vaccination show or show me within 72 hours of you walking through the door that you are, have tested negative. Well, we, you know that everybody's got different opinions on these things, right? There's somebody out there that for whatever reason has not gotten the vaccination, bought a ticket and does not want to jump through hoops because that wasn't the deal when they bought the tickets. I'm one of these guys that uses the phrase all the time. Once the toothpaste is out of the tube, baby, it's too late. What we're finding out, Jason Ginty, it's never too late. <laughs> I, I, I'm looking at Bonnaroo. I'm looking at the website and the Instagram, and there's people that are pissed off. Hmm. And I can't say that. that, that I understand they bought a ticket a month ago with none of these restrictions because that's what was comfortable for them. So there's almost an agreement. I bought this ticket and now you're moving the goal line on me. I thought I'm into this show and I'm comfortable with the way that it was set up before. Now you're putting added restrictions and that's not playing into what I'm doing in my life. What's right for my family. And you know, (laughs) you're never going to win. So I don't know what I did not see. And they also did this. People don't know this about Jason for about the length of a, it takes to drink a cup of coffee. He lived in Milwaukee and did radio there before he, before we both moved to new Orleans, Correct. that big Correct. Milwaukee fest, they changed it as well with yeah, tickets already on sale. And that's massive. That's over multiple weekends and stuff up there. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, you it's, know what? I didn't think, I didn't think that they would put restrictions on a show with tickets that were already on sale. Uh, it surprised me, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong, but if, you, <laughs> if you're holding a ticket to that show and we know that these shows are expensive, um, <sighs> you know, I'm reading the comments. It's funny to read. You know, This guy's like, I want my money back, man. I can't believe I'm not going to get to see who's ever playing Bonnaroo. It might, it, I don't know if that's a Foo Fighter show too. But there's the, just... And, they're bitching like, man, I can't believe I'm not going to get to see this. I'm not going to see this. And then some guy wrote, if, if only there was something you could do that cost you no money, you would still be able to see the band that you want to see. <laughs> the internet's yeah. undefeated. Um, uh, well, what's interesting about this is that, you know, you got to look at from the bands, you know, if it's being put on the bands, a lot of bands have dropped out of their tours. Limp Biscuit, Stevie Nicks came out just like yesterday and said, Hey, I'm 73 years old, man. I'm healthy. I got my shots, but I'm not taking a chance right now because shit's wild out there. I don't want to kill me. I don't want to kill my band members. I don't want my my crew to get sick. I don't want my fans to get sick. So you know what? I'm canceling my tour. We'll try it again next year. And that was her reasoning. Jason Isbell said, look, I'm drawing a line in the sand. You need to have proof of vaccination or you need to show a negative test. And he goes on but to so say late that- in the game though, dude, but so late in the game to, to change that and to think that- Live Nation and the venue was just going to be able to kind of like boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's correct. do this. No, I mean, gonna have dude, more people. It's going to take longer to get people through the gate. So you got to have more correct. manpower, and that's hard to find right now. But he's doing it for his entire tour. I mean, so you know, Houston was a casualty of the tour because it was a little tight to pull off. But he says the rest of his tour, this is it. If he's playing a festival and they're not following these rules, he won't right. play the festival. And he says, look, you can get your shot for free. He goes, but if you don't get your shot. You can get tested anywhere, basically. At this point, you can go to Walgreens, you go to CBS. They got all the clinics around town. Go get tested. It's a much better test now. They'll probably have them at the venues at this point. He goes, come see the show. There you go. He goes, we're not, we're not saying you have to be, get the shot, but just, you know, play the game a little bit. That's Foo all he Fighters said. Caught some shit, you know, when they reopened Madison Square Garden. Foo Fighters were the first band to play, and that was, I think, that was, was one of the first all vax shows. And uh, you know, you had to have it, it, before you even, you know, send me an email or call. I I get it. That card is so easily you could. It's so easy to replicate. 
they did say that the, that federal stamp on that card, if you do get busted making a, a copy of that, you know, it's not like, you know, when we were kids and we used to like change the date on our license to, you know, right. go buy beer. It's, it's a real federal deal. You're federally fucked. Uh, if you do get busted, it doesn't take you being on the internet for two minutes to get a stack of these things sent to you. And you just hand right in for all your buddies. Sure. So I, I'm not, I believe me, I'm not, I'm telling you that that's just out there. It's so readily available. It's crazy because my card is nothing special. No, it, mine's not. It, you know, like your driver's license, long before we ever really used that strip, we didn't know what it was on there. And there was all these things and these layers of things. If you look at your license, you really do look at it. I mean, there's all kinds. Of, it's like money. You know, there's all these mm -hmm. crazy things in there so that it can't be replicated. <laughs> that vaccination card is about the silliest looking thing ever. It's a piece and of cardboard. Kid, and the kid that's 18 years old that was working at the HEB pharmacy with the shittiest fucking handwriting ever is the kid that filled it out for me, you know? Yeah. And it, that gets me into a show. So they feel like they had some success with Lollapalooza. Their number's not mine. They think 90% of the people were there were vaccinated and went through the proper channels to get into Lollapalooza. That's going to be it moving forward. So I got a show coming up here. We have a show, BuzzFest. Yeah. And I get emails every day. Rod, what's going on with BuzzFest? It's business as usual, man. You know, I'm, between us girls, the offspring, they're the, they put out a song, got to keep them vaccinated, all right? Didn't they kick out their drummer? Because <laughs> he wouldn't get vaxxed. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're pretty excited about the vaccination at this point. <laughs> Dexter Holland, the lead singer, has a PhD in molecular biology. Okay, he did his thesis. He did his thesis on HIV and hosts. I wrote this down because I'm not smart enough. Virus host interactions. He knows a couple of things, man. You know, he's yeah. a pretty smart dude. In addition to being the lead singer, and you know, California is is different too. They just did a show with our sister alternative station out there, the Chargers. The Los Angeles Chargers had their first ever open practice and our station, our sister station out there was there and the offspring played. It was not a vaccine only show. Hmm. That's what I'm hanging on to right now in LA. You feel like they could have easily made that, you know, oh, a yeah. all vax and, you know, pate show, but you're and dealing, it you're dealing with the NFL. If they, if they played, Oh, they just played at the San Diego or the fucking Los Angeles at the stadium. And it was not, it wasn't under these restrictions that we're talking about. I'm very, and I'm being very hyper-focused on the offspring right now for sure. whatever reason, it could be any of our bands that are on our bill that could say, Hey, what's going on here? Are we doing these precautions now with this show? I just feel like the offspring, they changed, keep them separated to got to get vaccinated. And wow. they're really, really pretty outspoken about it. There's been no changes on our show. Um, I get questions every day, and you're right to question it. Absolutely, I can you tell you know. that. I can tell you that we will have zero. We will have. We will ha be able to put up zero resistance to anything. Um, we will have to roll with the mandate that is handed to us, and and I already told you it doesn't look like Live Nation is going to make this call. Live Nation's producing our show. It's going to be the bands and. Don't wait until two days beforehand. That's what I'm saying right now. Don't Jason Isbell, my buzz fest. Right. Make a decision now. But I wish I had answers for people because that's the ticket that people are hanging on to. Uh, I went to Hella Mega Tour and I got to see all three bands. I didn't go see the Interrupters. It is a four band bill, but Hella Mega is three bands that everybody knows about. That's on, you know, the big marquee. And you saw that Fall Out Boy missed New York. Yeah. Then they had to miss Boston. They did not make the DC show and they're waiting their 10 days. And then they were able to play Detroit last night. So somebody, and they said everybody in their camp, they're making it mandatory in the bands. They're all, they all have to be vaccinated and uh, somebody got sick. So they had to pull out of a couple of shows. So 
I, I didn't want to be talking about concerts like this, dude. I wanted to be fucking rocking all summer long. Me I too. So much fun. Dude, I had so much fun at Hella Mega. <laughs> walking around, it was at the baseball stadium. You know, we were down on the floor in front of the stage. We're just walking all over the place. And for a minute, I just forgot about it. I really did. I let the music take us. My wife had the best time ever. It was so much fun. I wanted that all summer, you know? So it's... It, when if there's a band playing in the next two weeks, we got the Black Crows this weekend here in oh. Houston, and they're playing with Dirty Honey, who is fucking great. Great band. Thursday night. Um, so when this podcast comes out tonight, uh, Rise Against is playing. There's tickets available. Guys, if you want to go see some live music and you're feeling good about going out, go out. Go out and see these bands. I'm not trying to scare you. No, uh, I, 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 we, I don't have any inside information. All we do is tell you, Hey, here's what's going on. And you start seeing these trends. Well, I, I, you're going to see more and more cancellations. I hate to be the Debbie Downer to ruin your day more, I know, but, but it's true. We're, we're seeing them constantly right now. Like every day there's a new cancellation here in new Orleans about another band, not playing or another festival. Or, you know, we got so many festivals here. There's thousands of them. So there's, there's small festivals, but they are festivals and they are fun. And, you know, I was, I was just like you, man, I was excited about going to see bands. I went and saw uh, the Seether and Three Doors Down show a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And it wasn't a masked event or anything. Nobody had a mask on it, but that was a couple of weeks ago. And everyone's kind of like, yeah, we're back. We're rocking. I was like, oh my God, I forgot about what I almost had to relearn how to go to a concert. It was yeah. very weird, man. It was yeah. cool. I felt like it was the first time in years, which it was. And, you know, I, I, in, you know, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but what the fuck is the NFL going to do? Because here in New Orleans, they just gonna, announced masks. Everyone in the Superdome has to wear a mask. So you're just going to have a beer in your hand the whole time. I mean, everyone. I it, know. I'm just we, saying. We've never, we've never lost that mentality when I, we talked about sneaking in beers. I can afford beers at Correct. Jazz Fest, but I just, there's something great about sneaking in a beer in my, in my cargo shorts, yeah. you know? I got the money. Right. I'm a 51 year old man, but yeah. for some reason, I'm trying to sneak a beer into a festival yeah. just because I'm, I'm seeing if I can. So some guys just gonna say, "Oh yeah, well, you know, I got popcorn and I got a beer. Boom, I'm not wearing my mask." So it's and, it's, and nobody can say anything to you yeah. if you got a beer in your hand. You don't have to wear your mask. Apparently, it's, you know, if you're eating or drinking. And I don't know if that's just a warm up to the next thing. You know what I mean? Like they, they, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it because it's just frustrating. It's depressing as shit. But I'm hoping that, uh, you know, get to see more shows because it's I, I don't want to sit in my backyard all summer the rest of the year again either. You know, I think that's where the big frustration is right now with everybody. You want to get out. You want to do shit, man. I want to I want to rock <laughs> to put it succinctly. I want to rock. I want to hang out. You know. Jazz Fest was a blow, man. Yeah, Jazz Fest was a blow. I can't tell you like you that I was totally caught off guard. There was a piece of me that was waiting for it. And then mm -hmm. when it dropped, it just, I was bummed out, man. I, I just, I was bummed out. Foo Fighters are my favorite, you know, and seeing them live and then in New Orleans, they outside. got a great personal connection and outside and all you guys there and all of us hanging out. Fuck. Ah. Well, when I mean, you got to look at it, like you brought it up, think of the economic impact. You Now you've lost all that hotel money. You've lost all your, all your bartenders and waiters and waitresses. That money is gone. All the vendors gone. Everything gone again because they didn't make it last year. They were counting on this. There's restaurants that open up around that area that make most of their money for the year because of those two weekends around, yeah. around the venue. And then they just muddle along the rest of the year. Now they're like, holy shit. Now what am I supposed to do? Because you know, you've been suffering for a year and a half with no business or zero, very little business. And now all of a sudden you're putting all your cards on jazz fest and now whoops, gone. And then here you go. This will really fuck you up to leave you on this note. Mardi Gras ain't that far away. Oh man. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Cause we're riding. We, Jason we ride. And I, Jason we ride. and I, we, we ride in Mardi Gras. We have a float and everything. everything. And we didn't do it last year. And so, and that was the last super fun thing I did. That was February in 2020, and that was before the world shut down. So everyone right. knows in Houston, it was the rodeo. Like, wow, the rodeo's canceled? Wait a minute, they, the whole month is planned. Nope. 
and this is this is me again not knowing anything uh no they've already got the bands booked no way toothpaste tube out can't get it back in the rodeo will never cancel we're in texas the rodeo's canceled but we did get in that mardi gras beforehand you know yeah, look, yeah. and that was the last like real fun we've had and yeah uh yeah go see the go see the bands that Quick. Soon. That you're hanging on the tickets too. Yeah, go see bands while you can for right now. If you're feeling comfortable about going out. Exactly. I, I'm glad we didn't open with that segment. That was no. really, that's some bummer ass shit uh, to talk about. But it is happening. And moving forward, e -e -e -e, yeah. we'll see. You got to do what you got to do for you. Whatever you think is right, do your thing. I'm not going to sit here and preach because that just gets us all kinds of hate mail. And I don't want that. <laughs> let's, let's do some final thoughts and get out of here. What do you got? Uh, you know what? I, I just want to make this quick, but I was at the beach for a week and I know, oh, well, it must be nice. Yeah, it was. It was fucking great. Okay. I'll tell you right now, the beach is the best. I love going to the beach, man. Paddleboard and fishing, swimming, all that shit. But you know what pisses me off? And, and I know you see this and everyone sees this when you go to the beach. Why is it that nobody picks up after themselves? Oh, There's plastic man. bottles. On, and I'm not saying it was bad. It wasn't bad, you know, but there was just every day, there was a couple of things on the beach, you know, and it's like, come on, man, you're at the fucking beach, dude. And then I run a lot along Lake Pontchartrain, which is right, you know, here in New Orleans. And it's a park situation. And fucking every day, there's just trash everywhere. <laughs> like people come out there, eat their lunch and chuck their shit out the window. I'm like, what year are we in? This is 1978 when that shit was acceptable. It's infuriating. And, like, how do we ever expect to move on as a, as, a, as a species if we can't even throw our own fucking garbage out? So that's my PSA for today. Throw your shit out. Drives me nuts. That's all I got. Rod, Rod, what's your final thought? Hopefully, can you end on a positive note, please? I mean, I don't know if it's a positive note, but it kind of goes back to the beginning of the podcast. I appreciate you if you're still here, the one or two people that's stuck through the whole thing. But when we were talking about radio and... You know, I like letting you guys know, I think, to, to, to be kind of transparent with you and talk about, you know, how songs are picked and why wouldn't we play this song? And look how popular it is on other platforms. That Does it make a little bit more sense why we play the songs that we do? But as, I'm, as we're talking and I said, okay, I'll wait, final thoughts. It's really difficult and it really does piss me off when these guys will email me and they just refuse to understand that radio is a business just like whatever it is that you do whatever it is that you do if you're a welder if you are a pipe fitter you're a plumber or whatever you're trying to do it the most efficient way possible and you're trying to it's all about the bottom line i don't quite understand why people don't understand that about radio or they just don't want to because it is cool it's fucking awesome, and I love it. I talked about the magic box and the magic of radio, but it, it's a business, and I never want to get into that part of it on the radio, but it's a business. And when somebody says, well, why don't you just go and do this? Why would you do that? Because I love working in radio, and I still believe in it, and a lot of people listen to radio. And But you work somewhere, and you know that you're working for someone else. People don't think that about us. And no. it, it, it's, it's really, it, that's something that I have not come up with the analogy yet. I'm just, I've, I got the restaurant thing that I think I got that one figured out. Okay, I can kind of explain formats to people. I can't get through people's heads that it's a business. And they're like, well, yeah, but, yeah, but, but, yeah, but, 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 but no. Pantera. But Pantera, <laughs> just play it. And it's, on, it's on YouTube. You can go listen to it anytime you want. <laughs> do you have rules? They just can't believe that we have rules. And oh, shit. everybody has rules. Wherever it is you work, you have to do what that job requires you to do. And it's not selling out in any business to do what the business demands you do to stay in that business. That's maybe the best way I've ever put it. Um, it's it's crazy to me that people just still don't accept that it, what we do is a business, and and, that, it, and we make money. I that I'll tell you, I we have to send money to iHeartRadio to operate. 
You have to send money to Odyssey. You have to send money to them. They're the ones that are footing the bill for everything. Correct. They want X amount of dollars back. Oh, yeah. That's, that's every a, business. That's a lot that's, of X's. <laughs> that's Roto Rooter. That's McDonald's. There's a franchise fee. It's business. You, you, the guy that is managing McDonald's is not just going to open up a hot dog stand inside the place because he loves hot dogs. Nope. He's, he's going to follow the format. It's a business. When people say that Metallica's Black Album, to, to bring it back around, that was their sellout album. Oh, they sold out, dude. Those guys are pussies. They're punks, man. They sold out. Well, you know, I don't know anybody who plays a guitar in front of a crowd who does it for free very often. Right. You know, I get that a lot from, like, you know, your local artists around town. They'll be like, oh, no, that, that, those guys are sellouts. Are they? You think they like to eat? <laughs> do you think they like to drive a car but it's not selling out. out music is that one thing still i think because we hear so much about um we hear so much about athletes contracts now it makes sense to people whether you think you know they're making too much money or whatever but you get the money everyone knows the owner of a team then you know that they go out and get sponsors right. and they do all these things the TV i money. really do think that your average person comprehends that whole machine, even though none of us know shit about it. Okay. You have no idea what the general manager does of a football team, but a radio station and music and people still don't wrap their heads around that. It's a business and uh, it is. And I'm in the fucking best business ever. I, and I really, and I, I firmly believe that people told me along the way, man, you find a job that you love, you'll never work a day in your life. It's the old cliche. And you know what? Yeah, we work hard at our jobs, but I never feel like I'm working hard. Me working hard is digging up <laughs> the top rock songs on YouTube. Me working hard is figuring out that I'm not going to sleep tonight because the Load album is Metallica's <laughs> jizz. Okay. <laughs> that is work. You had to research that at some point. You had to learn that. That's the kind of work we get to do. We get to research all this bullshit that is, that is maybe bullshit to most people, but we work hard to make this stuff happen. This doesn't just miracle out there, you know? I mean, you, you <laughs> I just don't understand the whole like selling out standpoint. You know, if you're Dude. an artist, okay, you're an artist, you know, <laughs> I do it for the art, man. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Well, how are you going to pay your rent? If you don't sell your fucking art, you yeah. know, even when make you something, make something that somebody will buy. Yeah. That's how it <laughs> you works. Have to eventually you have to do that. You know, even when you hear a rock song in a car commercial, that's where people will go. Oh, they sold out. Eh, they made it. They created it. It's their art. They can do what they want with it. You might not like it, but it's their art. They created it. Don't you think if you and I wrote a hit song, we wouldn't sell that shit to everybody to make a fuckload of money off it. Oh my God. I would sell, I would sell everything. I, I would, you could put my song on a tampon panty liner commercial. I'm like, take it. Take Cheers. it. How yep. much do I get? How much do I make? What's the deal? What's the cut? <laughs> That's, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I get it. You, you know, you want your art to be true. You know, you, you right. don't want to see that guy up there thinking about the, the cash register, but you know what? You're buying the tickets where you think that money's going. Ultimately it's paying the bills. And ultimately Business. means that you're super passionate about the music and you know, like having that discussion with somebody, it's like, I know what a big music fan you are. I, I, that I can, I can so relate to that, but I, I'm, I'm in, I'm in an industry that's a part of the music industry, a very, very big, huge part of the, of the music industry. And this is what we do. And it's awesome. It's awesome. So there you go. I did leave on a positive note. That was pretty it's good. Awesome. It's pretty good. You know what? It, it, and I've always wanted to do this, but it'll never work. But you know, it's, it, you know, we could kind of do an experiment, you know, send, send, send me an hour of songs you think we should play on a classic rock station, write down 12 songs. This is what we should play for one hour. I'll tell okay. you this. I'll tell you if it's going to work or it's not going to work. I'll tell you right <laughs> away. I, I look at those. Songs, no, that's not, that song is shit. It's never going to work because we know, we know what know? works. We, I love this song, man. I play this for me and the guys. We drink beers, man. We love this song. You're wrong, cool. Ginty. Ginty, we, we love this song. I got Tuna. five guys right here. I got five guys on the line. We all, this is our favorite song. Play it. Cool. Because you got five guys, right? You got five guys. That's awesome. Because I got That's 10. The affirmation they need. I've got 10,000 other people that like 
Sweet Child of Mine way better. So guess what? You're five guys. You're going to fucking listen to Sweet Child of Mine again. <laughs> Sorry. Was this, a, was this a weird podcast today? I don't know. All over the map, kind of, in a weird way. We talked about, uh, what the hell did we talk about? Music, Spotify. I did math and jizz. This is a okay. fucking, we're all over the board today, man. It's good. <laughs> I like it. It's the way it should be. It's, it, it's, it's good. I thought today was for the 20th episode, which I thought we'd get to six. I'd say we did all right. All right. Well, that's a wrap, man. Uh, hey. If you made it this far, damn, what are you doing? Yeah, find something to do with your life? time. Hey, um, here, here, I'm going to throw this out to you, and I don't know how we can do it. Can is you think there's any chance this weekend while you're in the in the Big Easy, we could uh, slap down a little quick guy? I'm not talking an hour one, me 20 minutes maybe, like a special because we've never done this face to face. No, we haven't. <laughs> I don't know how to even set up this shit to do it that way. Maybe we can do an audio version only or something. You know what I mean? I think we could probably maybe do something. See, you know what I'm saying? I think we could probably maybe do something. What the fuck does that even mean? Um, <laughs> it's like a I, no. We should be able to pull something off. I got shit here. I can bring my laptop over and we'll fuck around. I don't know. I can, don't I, know. can I do it wearing a red dress? I'm still wearing a red dress, even though I'm not like running around like an animal. I'm still, I, I bought a red dress. I'm wearing a red dress. I will not do a podcast with you if you're not wearing a red dress. That's my only stipulation. I'm in. I'm in if you wear a red dress. Can I wear my shorts instead? Don't edit this out. Don't edit this part out. I'm cutting I it will out. do, I will do out. an additional cutting special edition podcast while I'm in New Orleans this weekend. If you also, Join me in wearing a red dress. That's it. Shit. You don't have to answer now. You just let me know. All right, you know where to find me. You got my number. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I you got don't my know. number. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for listening. And uh, thanks to our sponsors, Pirates of the Quarter Tours.com and Lucky's Pub West in Houston. Woo! 2 0. Let's go. It's Put on find us wherever you listen to podcasts. See us on our YouTube channel and follow our social media pages at Play Pants Pod.